Um, basically, I, I'm, I'm from Cambridge. Uh, I will describe some of my background and on the slides. In fact, I'll do that through the slides, I think, rather than just doing it up front, simply because I, I really want to first of all set the scene for why I'm a credible person to stand in front of you to discuss AIoT and also angel investing, which is what my role today is. Um, let's start with that there. So this is um, my background, really. Uh, <laughs> probably have to ignore the dates. It sort of shows me to be one of the older people in this audience, I suspect. Um, as you can see, that from a, an early stage, uh, involved with technology from really school times through university, um, engineering and computer science at university here, which you can see was down here. Gap here, interesting gap here, actually, we can see the plurality of my career later on. Uh, this was when I had a proper job, the only proper job I have ever had, which was for Logica in, in London. Now I was working on almost what could be suggested as Internet of Things, because it was automating breweries and, and uh, real-time systems for utilities, um, before moving out to Germany here. Uh, carrying on uh, in Bavaria, setting up my first business, which is where the Black Line starts, um, after a year out there. Uh, and again, designed right through to about 1990, thereabouts, when sort of business stuff took over. Though I'm still involved, I still own the company I set up here, which we'll come on to later on. So I'm involved with technical solutions, selling technical solutions, even though I don't implement them. Um, property development sat in there, uh, just because the opportunity arose, engineering background, property development in the end, if you've got the guts, is really project straight finance management, getting the right team in place. Heavily involved in charity governance, so I've got quite a strong um, uh, sort of background in social enterprise and, and uh, charities, we've got in a number of different charity sectors over the years. And then got involved with mentoring and coaching initially from my faculty in Cambridge and then part of a number of other programmes. There's something called Idea Space you might have heard of in Cambridge, which is an um, a, a incubator hub. There's about 100 or so. There's, le there's probably more people in this building, but there's about 100 and something entrepreneurs there heavily involved with that. And then from that, got into angel investing, which is about 2006. Um, which is what I spend probably two, two and a half days a week doing at the moment. So just background, I'm obviously technology driven, a bit geeky at times, um, entrepreneurial, no big exits but made some money out of property development um, and heavily involved in, in a lot of angel investments at the moment. Um, just to show you, this is a company I formed in 1984. Some very old-fashioned stuff here. Just to give an example, it doesn't, I'm not going to run through the list at all, but some of the, you know, so I, I'm hardware, software, applications, interesting environments, etc. Um, this is a, a custom RFID device. That's actually an avalanche beacon we designed for somebody recently. Um, not, neither of those are Internet of Things. Um, so that's technology. I also run this, which is a slightly different model. I know there are one or two VCs in the audience. There may even be a corporate VC here, actually. Um, this is a corporate angel. We call it, generally the term, it's basically, some of you might know Marshall in Cambridge. Even people who live in Cambridge don't necessarily know it. There's a very a great hidden secret here. There's an airport near the centre of Cambridge, which is owned by Marshall, Marshall Group. Billion sales, engineering, over 4,000 people, fourth generation. Um, and with them, together with the senior management team there, the family, uh, we set up this corporate angel, which is basically corporate venturing, but using angels, angel chunks of money. <coughs> so this, I always co-invest with this organisation, but I also run it. So it effectively increases my own personal firepower using their money to put into deals. And as you can see here, we've invested about 750 in the last 18 months, mainly in technological deals. Um, we'll come on later a bit more on some later slides when I talk about actual angel investing into what drives angel to invest. And it's in red here. It's team, you know. You hear Alex from Summer and from uh, Amadeus say, he says there's only really three things that nearly have to of investment. It's all, they're all, comes, they're all a team, they're all the people. Um, so that's Martlet. We then move on to some of my angel investments. Now, I'll, I'll run through one or two of these simply because they are IoT specific. Um, Newell, which David Cleveland was supposed to be on beforehand, <laughs> so you hear more, I won't even mention Newell too much, but machine to machine, uh, infrastructure, data infrastructure. I'm sure we'll talk more about that. The top right hand corner, you can't, you can't work out what it is at all. It's an appalling logo, I <laughs> think. It's a spin off of the Cambridge University Engineering Department called Cambridge Seymour Sensors. So, this is a 
can you work that out? <laughs> uh, this is uh, basically a local, very low cost sensing platform. So it's using a CMOS technology. It initially was micro hot plates and then they turned into sensors. So as you can imagine, sensing, I mean, I don't know what the, I think it's about a six billion market at the moment, but it's increasing dramatically. There's the number, we've got a few sensors on our mobile devices now. Imagine how many sensors we'll have there in five, six years' time. So they're trying to capture some of that market. Otherwise, um, to some extent, Control, this is, a, uh, this is a company you won't have heard of. They set themselves up to do mobile phone base station backup power supplies using diesel generators for developing world. They found it really difficult to get into. So they've actually got some data comms sitting on top of it to monitor these. So that's definitely the internet of things. And I put, and John's not watching, is he? No. John Bradford Springboard is here. <laughs> Uh, it's obviously busy with something else. Uh, this is a, there's a springboard internet of things coming up in Cambridge, which I'm sure John will mention later on, of which there are a number of investors in this room already, or will be. The rest of them you can see software companies, uh, advertising company. Let's move on to actual angel, which is the core point of being here. So this is a, a slide which I, uh, it's not mine, it belongs to a guy called David Gill, who runs the St John's Innovation Centre, and just shows you where the angel's coming. It, probably to a lot of you it's not telling you anything new, but just run through it very quickly. All organisations need cash. You've got to pay the rent and you know eat, you know, as entrepreneurs, unless you've got a job alongside. At some point, you've got to spend more time on, the, on it. And this is a sort of flow. So this will, I mean, the TSB comes in here, of course. Uh, the angels are quite a large section of this, and, and sometimes the angels, you know, there are different parts of that where they will actually fit in. VC, this is where it really grows. The business is really growing, and, and David will talk about Neil later on when the business angel and the venture capitalists actually came in simultaneously. And Max, is Max in the audience? No. Max IQ Capital is, is part of that group in Newell. Um, it's obviously not here yet. So that's, that shows you where in the process business angels might get involved. A couple of slides, really. This is out of a, as you can see, out of a very long, so if you can read that, a, a very long uh, set of slides. No, it's really quite that long that a couple of us did to, in Cambridge, delivering, you know, how to get involved with angels. Um, I'm not going to go through that a lot, I've only got six or seven minutes, but you can see it's really trust, building up trust, um, building up a picture of what the team can do, how easy the team will pivot if necessary, you know, how flexible they are, how they'll learn, um, and building up a relationship. So that's the initial stage. I just want to add one more slide to that which is what can go wrong. And there's obviously a lot of things can go wrong. I mean, I'm not, I, I suppose I'll be the first person to mention HP and autonomy now. <laughs> Something went wrong there. <laughs> Who knows which of those it was. <laughs> um, so lots of things can go wrong, but in the end it's a relationship. It, you know, people, a couple of, you know, even say it's a you know, better, strong relationship than marriage sometimes. Um, happy to talk about this later on, or during Q&A. Um, or whatever, or by email. Final slide, um, just a few stats about angel investing, just out of interest, in, this is in the UK. So it shows some interesting things. One is, for a number of reasons, maybe the entrepreneurial culture in the UK, maybe uh, the problem, almost certainly the risk appetite, also almost certainly the tax regime. EIS, which some of you might have heard of, is a very, and it, in fact the figures increased last year, it's a, a very tax efficient way of investing in, a, in a, a startup. Briefly, it's you put some cash in, so you put 10K in, you get 30% back straight away into your income tax that year, so you get a check back for 30,000 or you get your income tax reduced. You've got a, and then on exit, providing the exit's more than three years into the future, you don't pay no capital gains tax on that. This is a figure from HMRC showing 700 million claims last year. Some of the claims, I know Newell, for instance, I've got preferential shares in, so it won't have gone through as an EIS. This is sort of number of angels of which 6,000 in groups, and I guess this is certainly, well, Nat's an angel, there are probably some other angels in the audience I don't know. So the average is that sort of amount of money. So that's the amount of money per year an average angel would put in. Now, it's not all new money, there are almost certainly be follow-on rounds. But that's quite an interesting figure here. This is actually about the same in the States, even though these numbers are obviously much higher. So although we might seem um, to be behind the States in terms of angel investing, in actual numbers, uh, the same. And if you take that number divided by this number, you've got you get 15 or so, don't you? So in fact, per 
and the, the states is about six, is it six times bigger in terms of population. So there's actually more angels per head of population in the states, but they actually invest about the same amount. And this is a, this is a number that <laughs> floats around. I mean, everybody, this is an internal rate of return. In other words, that you get in the bank, you might get 0.5 percent, well, maybe you get 1.5 percent at the moment. This this reflects the risk taken in angel investing. Often asked, you know, how could you possibly be so greedy? You're putting the money in, you want a 10 times return in a few years' time. Statistically, this is the amount you'll get. Not, you know, so effective equivalent of 22% return. So that, that's reflecting the risk one's taken because I don't, you, some of you will know the numbers of the 10 angel deals you do. You know, one will be stellar, two will be okay, and seven will fail. You know, you've wasted your money on seven on average. Um, so, my six or seven minutes is up. So that's me on top of Kilimanjaro. <laughs>